We got a new story here. The iPhone can now run Android. Thanks to something called Project Sandcastle. And it's important to note here right away. This is not going to be an easy thing to do. And it's not going to be a supported thing to do. And it's not going to be a thing that the average person is going to do. This is a bit of, uh, you know, an enthusiast expedition. It's a, an experiment. It's a project, hence the name, Project Sandcastle. The idea being, let's see, as a group of developers, tinkerers, and so forth, let's see if we can get Android to run on an iPhone. And... They were successful in doing so, specifically an iPhone 7. And there's a, some video footage, in fact, of this guy from Forbes running it, installing it. Now, the device is jailbroken. I don't know if anybody remembers the jailbreak scene. Uh -huh. I was in it for a minute, jailbreaking with the pineapple logo. Yep. Remember those days? Well, that's not what it is now. The hot jailbreak of today, it, it, at least in this video here, is called Check Rain. Mm. But I remember the rain component being a part of other jailbreaks in the past. Rain, rain. something else, rain. Wet rain. Wet rain. It's <laughs> a bit redundant. What about dry rain? Oh, what yeah, is that? Much better. Sandstorm. Uh, so... This is exciting to people because it gets you thinking about a reality. It gets you thinking about a universe that doesn't exist. It's reminiscent of the Hackintosh era. Of course, that was the flipped. That was the flipped way, wasn't it? That was trying to get Mac OS to run on PC components. Yes. It gets you thinking about iOS on Android hardware. It gets you thinking, of course, about Android on iOS hardware, which is what ha what's happening here. Now, there's another spicy element to the story. I know you like the spicy elements, Will. You like to go out for the spicy food and whatnot, right? Mm. Uh, the spicy element is the company that's working on this, this project, Sandcastle, apparently has team members who are part of a cybersecurity startup named Carillium. And the company Carillium is currently being sued by Apple for building a virtual iOS module where you could run iOS without a without a phone. Oh. And they they they're they're uh claiming there is that they're it's all about cybersecurity, looking for loopholes in the software, mm. experimenting without the downside of bricking a tremendous number of devices. They can play around and tinker huh. with the virtual phone without I mean it would be impossible if you had to do it on the physical hardware with the risk involved. Right. Thousand dollars a phone. So Apple's suing them, saying, hey, you're ripping us off. We don't want you using our stuff like that. And the, the, this Project Sandcastle apparently wouldn't be possible without that virtual iOS mm. developed by Corillium. So let's just say Apple is not happy about any of this, yeah. as you would probably assume. The other thing I should mention is that this, if, you're, if you think you're going to attempt it, a guy like you, which would be a pretty crazy thing, I don't recommend you attempt it. But if you were going to, you should check out this chart right here, seeing about seeing what's working and not working. And what you're going to find here is that your best shot at getting the most hardware to operate properly within Android on your iPhone is if you're using an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. And as you move up to the more current devices all the way to 11 Pro, you'll see almost nothing works mm. on the 11 Pro. So this chart helps you map out what's being impacted. No GPU, no audio, no cellular, no Bluetooth, no camera. But it still works, and it's the beginning. Huh. So it's an interesting development from where I sit, from my perspective. And it's something I've always thought about and wondered about. A universe in which Apple was not this, what do they call it, a walled garden? Mm -hmm. Was not this it, within its own silo of services, software, and hardware? Of course, this reality doesn't exist, probably never will. But what would people choose? What would iOS users buy if the iPhone, the hardware version, didn't work? Which 
Android smartphone would an iOS fan choose to have their iOS installed on if they couldn't have an iPhone right now? I like imagining these things. Yes. And of course, users in the audience, they can participate in the comment section of this video. You can do that. Yeah, imagine that. What do you think? They would pick a Samsung, right? Mm. OnePlus? I don't know. Man, it's hard. Yeah, Samsung. Probably. We'll see what they say. If you're if you're currently an iPhone user and you were forced to transition to Android hardware, which device would you use with iOS installed? And conversely, if you're an Android user, would you be interested in Apple's hardware mm -hmm. if you could bring your software with you? I mean, that's what these guys are working on. It's never going to happen in the real world, but it's interesting for now. And who knows, maybe it could be the start of a whole scene, reverse Hackintosh scene. It could be like a boot camp. Yeah, where, where well, boot camp was authorized. They were cool with that. Yeah, but like a version of that where you can run Android and iOS. Well, how about this, though? How about there for people or groups that need to run Android-specific apps but have leftover iOS hardware? Mm. If you need to run, I mean, I think they use an example in this video of Signal. Can you get Signal for iOS, the messaging app? I, I, I guess you can, but and I, so I don't know why they brought that one up specifically. But you can imagine that an app exists in the Android ecosystem that you can't get on iOS. I'm sure that there's something that exists, and then you could bring new life in that mm. in that department. Or if you were an iOS developer. Or you want it to be an iOS developer. No, sorry, an Android developer, and you only have the iOS hardware. I don't know. I'm creating scenarios here, Will. Can you give me a break? Gee, it's 2020. There's a lot going on here. I think it's interesting nonetheless. Mm -hmm. it gets you thinking. It'll never happen officially, but it gets you thinking. If this company can keep going, Project Sandcastle, without getting sued into, sued into oblivion, Yes. With a pit stop in Timbuktu. That's far. On their way to oblivion. Mm -hmm. A pit stop at a, for a quick diner in Timbuktu. Yeah. With a hot coffee and a hot toddy. Tell you what. And quick skillet. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you're going to send right. me to oblivion, I want a skillet first. There you go. A full time. Yeah, breakfast skillet. And a potato. Scrambled eggs. Uh, lots of pepper. And peppers. Bacon or sausage? Bacon and how dare you? All right. A little grated cheese. Mm. Ketchup or no? A little crispy top. I'll take a hot toddy to go with it. All right. So I can get over this little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get over that little... <laughs> All over the desk. Remember the company Black Shark? You're a big Black Shark guy, Will. You used to talk to Am them. I? You used to have the well, dialogue. Still do. You still can? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I want, I want to get my hands on a Black Shark 3 Pro. So you better hit up those contacts. Mm -hmm. You better get back in the Rolodex. Yeah. AKA LinkedIn. Get back into your LinkedIn because you're a professional with a suit and tie. Yeah. Uh, and what's your contact's name over there? Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound very, you don't sound very tight to it's me. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, you don't sound very tight to me. So I'll just talk directly. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Black Shark, <laughs> if you're watching this right now, I'm interested in the 3 Pro, and the reason is because it's got an even bigger display than the S20 Ultra, mm. and I just want to see what that's like. I mean, it's not tremendously bigger, but it's bigger. It's a 7.1-inch display, and it's got a couple of other interesting features on here, including it's got built-in magnets for a portable wireless charging power bank that comes with it, so you can keep gaming. You slap that on. Oh, okay. It's already got a huge battery because it's a gaming phone. It's got a, but then you get even more battery. It's got physical shoulder buttons. They brought back the 3.5 millimeter audio jack for the gamer types. 
they got up to 12 gigs of RAM. They got the Snapdragon 865 in there. They got the 65 watt fast charging. You see where it's going, Will? It seems like a powerhouse. They got it all in there, man. Yeah. 65 watt fast charging is so compelling to me on a, on a smartphone. It's wild. Mm -hmm. That's why I got laptops doing 65 watt. Mm. I got phones doing 65 watt. Mm. That's one thing that actually bugged me. I did the video. Well, you saw it. You were there. I did the video on the uh, S20 Ultra. Mm. And I'm talking about the big battery that's in there. And the thing that bugged me or bugs me about it is that Samsung makes a 45 watt fast charger, but they don't give you a 45 watt fast charger. They could pull almost an Apple move with that. Mm -hmm. What you really want is the 45 watt fast charger with this thing because it's capable. The other two are not for the record. The S20, S20 plus, apparently huh. it's 25 watts. But you can charge this, this guy at 45 watts, but I don't, I, I, it doesn't matter to me because I got those chargers right. in 2020. Just, yeah, someone has to buy it. Separately. I just want to say, I got those chargers. I hear you. You know, the San Diego Chargers. San Diego? It's a football team. Oh, the Chargers. You should get some Charger sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I made the video. I like weird 60-watt plus chargers. Yeah, it's a strange thing. All right, I have a collection. Yeah. So it's not such a big deal to me. I just plug the uh, S20 Ultra into those, and I get that effect. But Samsung makes one, and they didn't throw it in the box. Maybe next time. Make sure I'm right about this. Click accessories up there, Will, on the website. Make sure I'm not talking crazy here. Here's the accessories. What do we got? We got the Galaxy Buds Plus, of course. We got the Active 2, the watch. We got all kinds of cases, fancy cases. Actually, we got a few of these cases lying around. Maybe people want to see some of those accessories one day. They, they got their own portable power bank, okay? And they don't talk about the power brick. Hmm. Go to models. Click on models real quick, Will. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're detectives right now. Give us a bit of a scroll here. And there should be a page where it shows them compared. Power. Here we go. Here we go. So first off, 4,000 milliamp, 45, 5,000. Okay, we knew that. Hmm. <laughs> no, we were on accessories. If someone's going to think I'm crazy, we're better off just Googling right now. S20 Ultra 45 watt. Because that's what we're, we're professionals here. There you go. What's the best 45 watt charger for the S20 Ultra? See, so you're getting a third party charger. And there's the Samsung one. They have it. And the 25 watt is going to be slower, obviously. So don't you want to charge at the max capacity? You do. <clears throat> so what are they so charging? So they charge $39 for their 45 watt. I will, oh, That is cheaper than the 65 watt that I'm currently using as my everything charger. So it might be worth looking at if all you need is 45 watts, but you can then use it as a laptop charger if you go up to 65 watts and just use that. What's the one that comes with the... The S20 Ultra. Let me read that real quick. Scroll down. Samsung took several extra steps in the way it handles high-speed charging in order to prevent overheating. Unfortunately, those steps are a series of hoops that accessory makers and users like you and me have to jump through when we want to charge our S20 Ultra to get 45 watts. So you need a Type-C power delivery 3.0 that supports PPS, programmable power supply, 10-volt, 4.5-amp charge speed, and power delivery objects this negotiates the voltage speed. So I don't even know if I'm getting the full piece on my charger. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is give us Xiaomi and these other guys and Black Shark are giving you 65 watts in the box. Mm. Your name is Samsung. You are, you're the big dog. You're the Otis of the smartphone game. Uh. I'm talking about Otis because he's a dog. Yeah, he's pretty big. And around here... He's the biggest dog we got. <laughs> yeah. Which doesn't say much because exactly. Casper is a small dog as well. <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying, throw, give us a 45. Because now Black Shark's going to give me 65. And Xiaomi's going to give me 65. And wait a minute, Will. Hey, real quick. Reel me on the budget phone with the budget price. They're giving 65 on that latest Realme that we showcased. Really? 
Really? Didn't they? What's this right over here? Is it the X50 Pro? I thought it was uh, sitting over here super dark. Making me get up off the set here. Making me walk around a little bit. On my two legs. <laughs> Lost my chair for a minute. Vuk 4.0. Look at this. Look at this. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, it's a 50 watt, isn't it? This is a 50 watt? This is 65 watts. 65. This oh, super okay. dart right here, I know it's the European version, but that's 65 watts from Realme. Super dart. Okay? Comes with the X50 Pro. So I'm just saying, you know, it's a competitive marketplace. I'm saying, I'm not complaining. I mean, whatever. Maybe I am. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. What it means for the Black Shark 3 is it's probably going to charge fully to 5,000 milliamp hours or around there in half an hour. And that's nice. I like that. And if you're a power user, you're into this gaming and whatnot, then uh, you're probably going to appreciate that. It's going to come in two sizes, 6.67 inches. And then the Pro model is the one that goes up to 7.1 inches. It's going to be an enormous phone. That one also goes to... Uh, Slightly higher resolution, and they're going to be 90 hertz refresh. So you can't, you're not getting a 120, but 90 is better than 60, obviously. You're aware of that. Price-wise, in China, where I guess is the only place it's launched right now, it's around 500 bucks for the most affordable package. And then that goes up to about 680 if you want more stuff in it. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. You have to be into the styling. The styling is very gamer. It's very razor. So you kind of have to be into the styling. But if you are, then it's an interesting spec sheet. Speaking of interesting spec sheets, this one will, will definitely capture your attention. Uh, this is the Vivo Apex 2020 concept. And my goodness, I would like to, I'd like to get my hands on this thing. This is... I don't know if you recall, Will, but I used to, I used to be, I was nagging Vivo about the the next stuff. Yes. Remember, I was nagging them back in the day. Is it the one? And I had to go to China. Or? They put my hands on the thing. Yes. I had to go. I had to get on an airplane. Go to Shenzhen, man. Yeah. You we, were there. Yeah, I was there. And they said, "Okay, fine. You can have it for five minutes." Uh. They got a new one. They, they're always, they're trying to push it with these concepts, almost like concept cars, but closer than concept cars because you see this stuff filter down faster. They have a new 2020 concept with a slick video to go with it. And there's all kinds of, of exciting tech packed into this thing. Even though it's not for sale right now. And one, the one thing that jumps out to me right away, obviously, is the wraparound display reminiscent of Xiaomi's recent concept which had the waterfall going all the way around. Is that guy rocking the mask in the demonstration? Yes. Yeah, man. It's a top comment right now. Wow. In the demo, he's rocking the mask as well. What can you say? It's 2020. What can you say? That's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the waterfall display goes all the way around. I think they're saying, how many degrees is that? They're saying it is a 120-degree full-view screen. All right, so that, that jumps at you right away. Aggressive. We talked about this. It's a real science fiction. She got the mask as well. Wow. Mm. It's a real science science fiction vibe to it. But in, in terms of uh, actual functionality, interaction, are we getting the missed presses? There's no buttons on the thing. I don't know. I don't know, Will. We got to wait and see mm -hmm. because it's an aggressive thing. But then... They did some other stuff it seems like people really want and are ready for, and that's sticking the camera under the display. No cutout. Mm. Display goes over top. We saw this showcased a few times. They have it in this demo. They also threw in there uh, wireless charging at 60 watts. Wireless charging at 60 watts. Wow. Think about that for a second. Let that simmer in there. I mean, we were just talking about 65 watts. With this, Wired. with that guy right there. Yeah, super dark. Wireless at 60? It's going to be some heat. You know, cut, remember the skillet? <laughs> You're frying egg on this. Yeah. On this phone here. That's how I'm going to get that skillet on my way to oblivion. Yeah. I just need Vivo to first hit me 
with the 60 watt wireless mm. I'm on my way to oblivion you're just eating hash browns on mm -hmm. the yeah. mm -hmm. the last meal for me it's also got a built-in gimbal on the camera for stability wait till you get to the point in this video where they showcase the gimbal functionality mm. it's and if you've never seen a gimbal before this is actual motors in play here to stabilize mechanically stabilize a lens to create this incredibly smooth video we use one all the time and the stabilization potential is far beyond the other technologies that exist although you wonder how they could pack it into a smartphone it's kind of amazing there you go you see the, you see the effect course is going to have zoom periscope style, style zoom up to seven times uh it's got a Snapdragon 865, as you'd expect, 6.45 inch display, 12 gigs RAM, 256 storage. The gimbal camera is 48 megapixels, and the 16 megapixel camera is the one with the continuous optical zoom from 5 to 7.5 times periscope. It has no ports, no physical buttons, so you'd assume some degree of resiliency to the elements, considering there's no ports on it, Will. The screen acts as the speakers. There's no speaker grill. And it even has something very strange audio autofocus built into it. What does that mean? So if you're the one talking and I'm focus and I'm on you, it's going to use the microphone to tell I want to focus on you with the camera because the you're the audio source. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I perceive when I look at the demo video. You, you can tell me what you think it means. Yeah. Well, we'll find out, I, I guess, though. Are you putting a disclaimer right now? <laughs> No, I'm saying if you watch the clip right here, you'll see it says the slick uh, clip here is all about it has this feature, check. And then another feature, check. And you're going to want it, check. That's how the whole thing Skillet works. compatible. But you'll see right check. here, look at this. It shows a vibrating screen, says okay. voice tracking autofocus, check. So you keep talking and moving around and it's going to, I guess, use the audio information to help lock focus on the audio source like on speakerphone or maybe maybe they just mean for the audio channel mm. can create like a shotgun effect to mm. get better audio from the thing you're focused on they can mean a lot of things yes anyway nonetheless exciting times they're still doing the concept thing and much like my message to mr black shark if uh vivo if you want to bring this thing over you can you can bring it over I'm just saying, if you need to talk to Willie Do, it's will at lulater.com or will at unboxtherapy.com, and we'll we'll uh, we'll put our hands on it. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird? Mm. In fighting, in like the UFC, they say, "I'm gonna put hands on you," Ugh. and then that means, and then that means they're gonna beat you up, right? Yeah. When in the build up to the fight, yeah. wait till I put my wait till I put hands on you. Yeah. But then in tech, it's like hands on. Hands-on with the Vivo yeah, Apex yeah. 2020. It's, it's very friendly, mm -hmm. the hands-on. But hands-on you in a yeah, UFC environment? That's definitely a bit aggressive. That's aggressive. bad news for yeah. you. But hands-on here, it's great news for everyone. Yeah. Friendly. As long as we're, as long as we're wash our hands first and sing happy birthday twice <laughs> in 2020. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Just trying to put the message out there. There's a new Batmobile. Will? Yeah. And you, Exciting. the thing was, I had this story, but then also before we we shot, you said, "There's a new Batmobile, Lou," mm. and you didn't know I had this. So I said, "I got it already." Will? Yeah, that's what happened. Yes. So that means you and I, it was the parallel thinking, yeah, the synergy. Yeah. So both of us knew this was newsworthy, mm. and it is because it's you know. Well, you're a Batman fan. I'm a Batman guy, as far as superheroes are concerned. I mean, the yeah. outfit's a little much. But he's a regular guy, and his powers are not too crazy. Uh -huh. So it's kind of in the realm. It's a little more real. Plus, he's got the gadgets. And what do I have? Um, I got skillet. the gadgets, Kurt. A skillet. I got six phones over here, so I'm basically Batman. That's how that works. And I got a skillet in Timbuktu, so uh, another reason. Uh, this is I love this new Batmobile. You Call do. me crazy. I there's something up, I love it. It's retro. I know people are gonna say, why would he have an old looking car? Why would he be with the why would he have a muscle car looking thing? 
It's like a Camaro Mustang. It's got a huge maybe V10, V8 engine in the back looking thing. It, it, yeah, it looks like a lot of classic kind of cars. I know they could do a lot of things. You had the tumbler. Maybe it should look more high tech, but who knows? Maybe Bruce Wayne's having a midlife crisis and he wants to have a classic car. You don't know the story. You don't know why. But mainly for me, it's just a, it's just the shape of the thing is really compelling. And maybe it's it's also because I just haven't seen a Batmobile like that before. Mm -hmm. The tumbler thing was way over the top. The Batmobile when I was a kid, I'm talking Michael Keaton Batmobile was iconic but yes. different. It kind of had more curves more similar to the retro vehicles. And then this one right here for me is is more in line with that. And we have a cool write up on Jalopnik where they there they go into depth. They say it looks like a 1970 Barracuda actually and they would be the ones that would know that. And the rear fenders are a callback to the haunches of the jet engine 1990s Batmobile. That's the one I'm talking about. And I agree with that. The rear end kind of looks like that. So it could be a muscle car type of Batmobile coming up for, who is it? Uh, Pat Pattinson? Pattinson. Pattinson? Yeah. Pattinson? Pattinson. Pattinson? Yes. Are you sure about this, Will? Ah. I feel like Vin disagrees with you over there. He's a big Twilight guy, so <laughs> he would know. So, yeah, uh, I mean, he, he's been a controversial choice. People say he's too young uh, to be Bruce Wayne. I don't know how old is he. Well, he's not that old, but it could be like a, a young Bruce A young Wayne. Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how old Batman is. Isn't he normally 40 years old around there? Okay, he's 33, 1986. Uh, a, year, a year younger than I am. Mm. But he looks a decade younger. He, yeah. I got miles. I got miles he doesn't have. <laughs> Run it to the ground. Yeah, I got miles he doesn't have. I'll tell you what. Well, I can't go into it here. I hear you. But, but I, he was also a vampire. I'll tell so you what. I, I, I'll tell you what. I haven't been putting premium gas in this tank. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, I've been putting premium unleaded. Unled, yeah. You know? So. Anyway, I guess he can be Batman. He was a vampire. It's kind of <laughs> bats, vampires, Batman. That's how it works, right? It comes full circle. Batman has the bats thing. Vampires have a bat thing. So I think yes. that's how it works. Yeah. That's why they picked him. I don't know. He looks very serious. Can he make a joke? No. You Maybe. gotta look at the chin. You, Batman you know? has to have that chin. Yeah. Wait, did, did Christian like did Christian chisel. Bale have that chin? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Did Michael Keaton have that chin? He's Kirk, got a Kirk chin just on sneezed. Him. Let's get out of here. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we got a new Batmobile, so that's cool. Next up, uh, this one. Uh, obviously, I've talked before. I play hockey. Uh, I'm, I'm a hockey guy. Well, I'm from Canada, so now we have we have tech hockey tech this is really interesting stuff and controversial stuff because now the two worlds collide tech and hockey oh, okay hockey is the i think the most high-tech sport in the sense that you got you got steel blades strapped to your feet you're in a refrigerated building and uh -huh. you have carbon fiber equipment uh -huh. sticks and maybe not i don't know it's gotta be up there it's gotta be up there yeah i would say so it's got to be NFL. up there. And now they're going to make it even more high-tech, unlike some other sports that are a little bit restrictive about change. Apparently for the NHL playoffs, they have a brand new puck with a bunch of electronic sensors in it. And we don't really know yet how those sensors will be used, but I already have some ideas of interesting ways that these could be utilized. In the past, they experimented with the puck making streaks across the ice mm -hmm. so people could follow the play and see like a slap shot. You see the, the bolt behind it. Some hockey fans flipped out when that happened. The traditionalists, they said, what are you putting a streak? What do you think? I can't see the puck. I've been watching hockey 26 years. Was that you? No, I, I don't care that much. I <laughs> put a streak, whatever. I don't care that much. It was a, it was a little much that what I've seen up until this point, but I'm right. also a tech fan, so I like this kind of stuff right. to a degree. 
so they've they've piled sensitive electronic equipment into this puck. And we don't know how they're going to use it. But one way, I think, if you don't want to do the streaks, Will, when they're evaluating if the puck went in or didn't go in, if you have a... Isn't there a way where there's yeah. a sensor, if it crosses the line, it's a goal. If it doesn't cross the line, it's not a goal. It's just binary. Yeah. You know? No video reviews and frame by frame and the puck is partially over and... It, I don't know. Maybe they'll use it that way. Or maybe we're just going to see flashy streaks all over the the arena. That's possible, too. Now, they showed off some crazy high-tech stuff during the All-Star game where they had every guy pinned so you could see the names. They were tracking the speed of each end. You could see right. up, up top how fast each player was skating. So they are working on some cool stuff. It'll be interesting to see, but... I also agree with some people that do you really want to risk it with a new piece of equipment in the playoffs when people worked an entire year, their entire lives to get to this point, and now you have this tech-injected puck that could malfunction, and Crosby already said, I don't know, it feels a bit different, the weight's a bit different, Crosby being the star player, star player in the NHL, for those that don't follow. He noticed the edges of the puck felt different. Mm. Anyway, nonetheless, mm. the NHL doesn't care. They say we're going for it in the playoffs. Well. They say we're a high-tech league. They say, we're, we're going to be talked about on Lou later, so we're going to put it in. And apparently it costs $100 for each puck to be produced, which is a little bit more than the typical rubber hockey puck, just so you know, Willie. I'm keeping you in the loop Are there uh, batteries in there, or is it like RFID, some sort of... It's a good question. I don't think... You got to charge the puck. Yeah, I don't know. I doubt... I think it would have to be sealed, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't... I mm, would a battery in a lifespan, and then the puck is you, the puck is retired after a game. I don't know. Maybe it's it's uh, hard to know exactly what they're going to do with it, but we're going to see as the season progresses, as we get into the playoffs here. We'll see what they try to do with it. All right, last story today: uh, boosted boards. I had not been following this at all, by the way. Boosted boards, which they were one of the original players in the electro if not the original yeah. player in the electronic skateboard space they're they're having tremendous difficulty now really? by the looks of it based on this report here on the verge uh the electric skateboard startup has struggled and they are laying off a significant portion of their employees they have a, a roughly 130 person team and they have blown through some cash trying to develop their next product which was a motorized scooter to go with the skateboard they also say that the tariffs, Trump tariffs, have hurt their business specifically because their stuff is all made in China. And the tariff was uh, increasing the cost 25% for them, 25% tariff. And they had, they were looking for an exclusion and they applied for one, but wasn't they weren't granted or reimbursed as of yet for it. Uh, I don't know, a couple of things. They took off like crazy. I don't know if you remember. I mean, it was boosted across YouTube all over the place. Boosted this and boosted that. And I can speak from personal experience, even without the tariffs and without the uh, the scooter, investing in the motorized scooter, I was getting hit up shortly after the boosted board thing took off. I was getting hit up by every, all these various manufacturers doing electric skateboards. Uh-huh. It was every other day, it was some other electric skateboard. And it was electric skateboards in conjunction with all the other variety of electric vehicles that came out of nowhere. Electric bicycles, electric scooters, electric, um, those hoverboard things. Yeah, the hoverboard. Man, it, was, it became out of nowhere. It was like overnight, yeah. the electric vehicle onslaught began and there were 7,000 choices. Uh -huh. And so I think it's a combination of things here where it just was the perfect storm where all these uh, competitors, apparently the barrier to entry into the space wasn't what I would have imagined it to be. It was just, it seemed easy. Right. Like overnight, all these variety of electric vehicles you could choose from. And I even tested a few of them. You can go back into the, into the old school Unbox Therapy uploads and you can see us riding around and scooting around and, just the variety of electric vehicles that have shown up here must have applied some degree of pressure to the, to the original. Look at that title, I Crashed. Imagine that. Look at me flying over there. Did we open the video with the crash? Wow. Well, I mean, it was only a minute. 
I think it's a separate. Oh, this is a separate. This is just the crash. Okay, sweet. Yeah, let's let's play this. Let's let this run. Uh, May twenty eighth, twenty seventeen. Look at the weather, man. That's coming soon, Will. Yeah, props on Jack. Yeah, he was on a long board. I was on a little mini electric board, which was there. Here. Oh no, this next bump. So, oh no, the next one. Bam. <laughs> uh, you know what? It wasn't as wow. bad as it, it wasn't as bad as it looked. But the hand got a scrape, a couple of stones. And there's Tom. <laughs> Tom. Tom's on a Segway. He's like, what happened to you, dude? Tom's on a Segway. And I knew in that moment I had an upload. Right in that second, I knew I had a video. Imagine that. Anyway, yeah, so Boosted, it's a bit unfortunate because they were on Kickstarter and they kind of started the trend. They, they were the, they're still the, the name associated with electric skateboards. And if you go to their website right now, you'll see everything is out of stock. That's a creepy situation. Everything is out of stock. And in the forums and on Reddit and so forth, people are freaking out a little bit saying, hey man, I ordered this thing a long time ago and I got no update here. And the website's showing out of stock. And there's a feeling that uh, so there's some speculation that the whole thing is being wound down, that they could not secure more money. Oh, no. Again, that's the speculation within the article. And it's a wind down period. And the only people left are just some customer service people trying to send out the final messages. Uh, there's a blog post on a company's website saying that they're trying to pursue. Uh, pursue what? Strategic. What is what is the actual wording? Strategic options under new ownership. Boosted brand will continue to pursue strategic options under new ownership. So, yeah, they're looking for some cash, man, to 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 continue to hang around, and that's that's pretty intense, man. That's not. I mean, you're not. You you never want to see it mm -hmm. with a with a uh, a startup, a company, all the promise, all the hype. It's kind of strange, really, because I felt. They were the player in the space. It was theirs. It was their game to lose, mm. so to speak. And it turns out, man, it's hard. It's hard. In 2020, it's a, such a competitive marketplace. And like I said, Will, shortly after this brand came onto the scene, it was me getting hit up by a thousand other companies with their various versions of it. And that's just the nature of the thing. That's the nature of the marketplace. Should they have done more? Could they have done more? I don't know. Was it a pricing thing? There's so many factors. Should they have invested so much in the scooter? Or should they have stayed with the skateboards? Done, done more skateboards, dropped the price on a skateboard. Uh, I don't know, Will. I don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. I said that to you before on this show. I don't have all the answers. But it's, it's an interesting story to follow, and, and we, can, we can continue to see where it goes. Apparently, they're not alone, though. There's a fellow electric skateboard startup called Inboard. They laid off all their employees late last year. And there's a Los Angeles-based e-bike startup, Wheels, and they laid off a bunch of employees last week, despite recently getting $100 million in funding. Mm. So it's not easy out there, man. You got to appreciate the people that are out there making things, trying to do it, because I promise you it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's a hard gig to be out there trying to compete, trying to build things, ship things, service things, deal with customer service and so forth. And 2020 is difficult, man. Mm. I promise you. Good luck, Boosted Board. Good luck.